Welcome back to Girls on Sunday here in the company of Sunderland manager Steve Bruce and he's Gaffer, Niall Quinn. Mm. Um, we, 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 you know, we see some footage of you as a, a young player there, but this relationship that everybody is, is very interested in is, is the two of you working together. How, what's the basis for it, Steve? How does it work? <laughs> I keep knocking on his door for money. That don't <laughs> work. So, now can we find a bit more? I think that's what we all do. But no, I think the one thing that I can't do is obviously take the good relationship that I've got with him for granted at the end of the day he's the chairman and I try and show him that respect and, but the good thing of course as I said at the top of the show is he understands of what the game is how difficult it is for example this week for instance you know Evan beat us handsomely where we were poor you know they go and lose to Redden at home on Wednesday night and then have a fantastic result at Newcastle yesterday that shows you just exactly how it works there's no real remedy to it and if you try and analyse it too much so when you've got somebody who understands it a little bit then obviously it helps so is it completely different from all the other chairmen you've ever worked with I would say so and uh, I've had some difficult ones and some good chairmen too um, you know, and I've, I've been in it a long time now so you, you've seen a bit of it and, but the big attraction when I was, was going up there was obviously the chance to work with the club and looking from the outside I always thought that with Niall and George and the owner with his ambition of what he wants to take the club then it can only be uh, a good job to take it. Uh, I was, I was all willing to go and do it. So you're a former player, you're a fan, you're the chairman. When the results go wrong, is it hard for you to swallow? Well, well, to not say it, something. I, I think it, you, you suffer together, you know. And thankfully, it's never been that much suffering that you come to a point and say, "Geez, it's his fault, not mine," because that's usually what happens in in, 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 in relationships and in football. And it's very important, you know, that we're that we we we. We're not so close that we're, we're missing things. You know, we have to have, we have to have a relationship. And, and the, the word I use is when people ask me, you know, friends ask me, or, or I'm not, not really public, we say it's a partnership. And partnerships work when you understand each other's um, good points and support where there's where there's weaknesses. And now I have weaknesses, but, you know, in, in what I do, and Steve has me out with that. Um, you know, and, and you get good people around you. It's not just about uh, Steve and I. Steve is a fantastic. Uh, group of people around him and um, and I'm lucky in that you know I have a very small board uh, there's five of us now with um, David Miliband having joined the other four and we have an owner who believes in the chain that goes from where he is right down to, to Steve's people rolling out you know even the, the academy stuff you know we're getting a big success in our academy as well so we've had a tweet from um, James Andrews who said do you think the understanding between you is better because you played in the same era <laughs> possibly I think we had the best era you know, when I look at it now, and although I said that it must be fantastic to play now, and you, you see the pitches and, and what they earn and the salaries they get, but uh, whether that made a difference, possibly, you know, the same sort of age. Possibly. How would you? Have do you think? Yeah. Do you think you'd have got on if you'd have caught him when when? <laughs> <laughs> It was Polly's fault. When you had that challenge. Was, it was Polly's fault. He used to always get picked up. Oh, 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 what are you going to see me? Oh, 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 you've got something, have you? We've got something here. <laughs> oh no, oh, dear <laughs> oh, <laughs> If you'd have caught him, he'd have been in orbit Jeez. now. <laughs> so, there was another time which, which has never been shown. Um, when I was actually on the ground and Steve went to give me a hand up, but he stood on my other hand that was on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I had oh. this mark on my hand for about three years afterwards, you know. Um, but the, and every time was, he looked at you, thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was an intensity there, you know, because, you know, in those early days, Man City weren't so far behind Manchester United, no. and it was, a, you know, it, it was a, who was going to be the better club each season for two or three years? Um, and then obviously, you know, Sir Alex's uh, strength went, went out through the, through the roof, and, and United did what they did, and, and Man City suffered more because of, I think, looking back, because United and, and Steve, the way they made the breakthrough, um, we were finishing fifth, in uh, what we call the Premiership now, and um, you know the fans have gone for the manager's head. And, and it, it all went a little bit wrong. Can you imagine a challenge like that now. <laughs> dear, oh dear. You see the same <laughs> diet. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the the new, I mean, that's 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 where it has changed, and possibly for the better too. You know, possibly, <laughs> possibly for the better. Yeah. It must be difficult for it to be a defender because it's always the first one you'd lay a marker down, wouldn't you? It's a difficulty to defend like that. Yeah, you'd have a free kick for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how Chris, you're here because you, you loved that side of the game and you got stuck in. But one of the things I remember the first time I ever even spoke to you after a game, it might have been with Bradford or Luton in the early days when I was at Arsenal, and we kicked something similar, a similar thing like that. And we literally had a beer together in the lounge afterwards and, and you know, and it was laughed kind of it. laughed about it. And, and certainly there was no way I would have tried to get you booked in those days. Um, 
you know, tried to get me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a given. That was a given. That's that's a given. Yeah, yeah. So there's something yeah. more sinister now because people played for that well, sort of I thing. So that then, angle where you could have had a drink with, with Cammy yeah. after the game, that's that's, that's gone. gone. Um, yeah, perhaps I think uh, the, the, the players are cocooned so much now, and it's away from that 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 mix, that natural mix we used to have. And those, no, I'm not saying it was right, but you know, we, we would see the Spurs players and. Uh, you know the various places when I was at Arsenal as a kid, we'd see the United players at Man City, and there was there was a kind of a respect there that um, that you know it, it, sometimes you think now there's a, it's a little bit more standoffish, you know. Um, there's a lovely quote in your autobiography uh, talking about how your your affection for Sunderland now. This is the quote: I learned my trade at Arsenal, became a footballer at Manchester City, but Sunderland got under my skin. I love Sunderland. <laughs> what is it about Sunderland? Um, well, I suppose. I was. Uh, I moved up to Sunderland. I couldn't do a medical. My knee wouldn't have stood up to it. Uh, they still made me the record signing, and I bombed. I, I was hopeless for for three months, four months. Um, got a really bad injury. I, as I said, I did the other knee, and uh, I was washed up in many respects. The club got relegated that year. About to move into a lovely new stadium. Um, I'm uh, looking at you know packing it in. I, I was very close to packing the game in. Peter Reid believed in me. I, I'd had a couple of opinions from surgeons. I had the forms from the PFA to quit. I was 30 years of age and um, Steve, Peter believed in me and, and said, you know, give it a go. Kevin Phillips walked through the door, which is important. We, we'd Somerby and Johnson cross the ball at every given opportunity. Uh, and I began to find my feet and it was the backing I got from the fans at that point where they, I think they appreciated seeing somebody who, who was giving it everything and it was last chance saloon. And it just started to happen for me, you know. Um, and they, they, look, they are the most incredible set of fans. One trophy of note since the war, and I'm giving out to them because there's only 42 or 3,000 of them going to the matches. You know, it's, it's, it's just an amazing place. And as I said a little bit earlier, if you buy into that, and if you use it to your advantage and you're not afraid of it, it's the greatest of all. I mean, I, I, I was at Arsenal, we won the league in Anfield in 89. Fantastic night. Um, you know, I, I was at Man City, we had some great days there and, and, and big crowds. But when, when you come to a place like Sunderland and you see what it means to the people in the city and, and, and the, the head of the, you know, the, the, the surrounding areas, um, you just, it, it means more up there. And therefore, if you're passionate about football, you're getting more, uh, more of a return you know, in your, in, on the emotive side of things. Um, when you start to, to, to see what it means to them and you buy into that and it starts means to you, then you'll have a career up there. Then, it, then, you, then you work it. And I have to say, we spoke about Darren earlier on. Darren did that. Darren came up, he fought so hard to come up, if you remember that time at Spurs trying to get away. The fans loved him. Now, Darren sort of left that very quickly, which was disappointing, but, you know, I haven't left it, and uh, I still... It's the driving force, you know? The driving force of, of this whole Sunderland plan that we have and, and trying to make the club biggest, because the people deserve it there, you know? Um, to have the numbers coming, to believe in their club, uh, and yet such little success, um, you know? And you can, you can talk the talk, and they don't do that. This isn't a talk, they just want to see effort. Uh, they, they, you know, and, and one of the greatest things, and you'll appreciate this, one of the greatest things about Sunderland, Sunderland could play and, and score three goals, but if somebody makes a haymaker of a tackle, the roof lifts off the stadium. You know, and it's not that they're, they love. it's what they, they love that passion. They work hard themselves. They, they come from, from yeah. you know generations who have done that. And, uh, you, you, you mentioned you mentioned that you get forty two thousand, and yet you still give them a hard time. And um, <laughs> there was a, you famously come out saying you despise the fans that are watching the games illegal mm -hmm. illegally in the pubs that have got them off foreign yeah. satellites. Um, it's an interesting one that really, isn't it? Because the reaction from some of those people is economically at the moment we're in a really really tough time. Sure. Don't have the money to get to the game, so I can watch it and I can show my support in a different way. And then they, equally, they see someone like David Miliband coming, uh, who sits there as a politician, or we know him as a politician, earning tens of thousands of pounds from Sunderland sure. to do a job as a non-exec director, or I'm not exactly sure what his role is. And they see that, and they find that quite hard to do. Well, well there, there's, there's a great chance to explain everything there in one go. Um, the line uh, before the one that says, I despise the ones who watch it illegally, in the statement I made, and it was a calculated statement, um, after three years of being nice about this problem, the line before said, uh, this is, uh, I will, sorry, I think the line actually was, I will never criticize anybody who can't come to our games because of economic reasons. And it's not their argument, and I understand it. And come when you can, really appreciate it. They're the letters I've sent back to people who have, who have said what you said. Uh, I can tell you now that the demographic of the people watching it illegally in the pubs, mostly male, uh, in fact, you know, nearly exclusively male, watching the game illegally, with uh, disposable income, well dressed, and spending four or five hours in the pub that day. And it's more uh, uh, what's happened. I think it's more. Um, 
it's, 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 a, it's a lazy mold that, that people have got into. They leave their house at 10 to 3, watch it in the pub, and they're back home again without having to the hassle of getting to the ground, uh, without the hassle of, you know, I suppose, of the big crowds and stuff. But there's the implication then on you to, to take that hassle out of it, to make it easier for them to Absolutely. And, and I think, um, you know, the, the fact that we have such a, a, a big amount of fans coming anyway is great, but it's my job to protect and maximise the club and get that uh, to, 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 to go the, to the next level. Now, a lot of the letters I got from people were saying, like, you know, you want your cake and eating it, you're taking the sky money. And we're, 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 you know, the Liverpool game coming up is a classic example, you know. Uh, that's a, that's a legitimately live game. Uh, it's at one o'clock, half one, I think, on a Sunday. So it's a really tough one for our fans. Um, what I'm saying to you is, if you really believe in, in your club the way you do, and th that I've bought into up here, that this, that this club is famous for, you will appreciate it. That's a great thing for the club to get that extra money for the TV game. Fill it out for us still come to the game and then I can start to show the world look at us while all the other crowds are down here we're bigger than Man City we're bigger than Chelsea we're bigger than Liverpool I can then turn us into an international club they can help me rather than stay at home and say no, Quinn wants his cake and eats it because ultimately what we're doing is trying to bring the best players. Is, 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 is maybe maybe the balance would they argue then is you get this money? How about for some of those games you lower the ticket prices, and fill the stadium, prices, yeah. let let the let the fans who come don't usually come come and realise what a fantastic atmosphere it is. Sure, per perfect. That's a perfect um, scenario in the, the layman's terms. Sure. And what I'd say to you is there are components in, in in football. You have the fans, which are the lifeblood of the game. You have the media, which look in, like some things, don't like other things. You have the football clubs trying to keep it all going, the, the board of directors, uh, owners. And then you have the ones that are in the most advantageous position, the players and the agents. And that, that to me, that, that's, that, that's the, the, the circle. And these guys have all the power. European law says they can walk away from contracts. Uh, the ludicrous transfer system, where, where we're squeezed into a time frame. The media and the fans, you know, the, 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 the fans, you know, when I, when I put petrol into my car, you know, they're saying to me, get your checkbook out. And then, you know, as a result of what I said this time, they went, stop giving the players all the money. So then other things to say, let us in cheaper. So come into my position and say, look, this is where the, the power base is with the players and the agents. My position is, I'll try and do that for you, but you, you, want me to get the best here. Mm. If I give you that, and if I stop giving them the money, Sunderland could be a yo-yo club again. And we're trying to step up from that, and all I'm asking for is that the people going to watch the game illegally, who are fans, uh, that, they, that they change their minds and come, and come to the stadium. Now, one of the great successes we had is the biggest uh, chain of pubs in our region agreed to stop showing it, and that made front page news, and, and it was a, a significant victory for us. And the numbers that that person told me that were going to watch it even was bigger than the ones that, that made me say what I did. But remember, I, it was a calculated sure. assessment of the situation to raise the debate. The debate has been raised fantastically, and I'm on the road tomorrow night uh, seeing fans in South Shields. Uh, Tuesday night, I think I'm in Sedgefield next week, Rainter Meadows. You know, so, so we're going around explaining where the club is going and, and why it's so important we get this extra. Well, we stopped the rot of, of a decline um, that has happened each year since we've gone in the Premiership uh, four seasons ago, and we built it back up. Now, I can now go back to you about David Milvan. Yes. He's been at the club six weeks, I would say, already, I think he is... I'm not so sure football is even going to be ready for this guy. He is that good. What's he um, doing? Uh, David is a vice chairman of the club. He assists me greatly in large picture, bigger picture planning for where the club is going, uh, contacting us to places that this club could never go. We make all our income in a little circle around Sunderland. For this club to stay in the top ten for the rest of its existence, we need to be a club that is known around the world, like, that, that, that is, has, is able to offer this great passion we have, this, this fantastic love for the game. Uh, on the greatest stage of them all in the Premier League, can we buy international brands into that to make us a club that is an inter truly international game? Now, that's one part of, of his job. Second part of his job, um, our foundation. You know, the, the, the media don't, don't, don't go on too much about this. Uh, they sometimes like to say clubs are removed from their fans, and that's one of the things you said there. Why, why don't you... Uh, give them free tickets, let the players... So you can see that the job I have, I have to keep the great players coming and I have to keep them coming yeah. in cheaply. It, it doesn't work that way. The balance isn't right. So what we, what, what we do in, uh, in, 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 at Sunderland, and, and we, we would be the biggest, uh, we have um, a foundation attached to our club, which actually is in our club in under the stands, and we have 100 people employed in that, and we assist 40,000 kids a year. Now, that's a massive charity. It's a massive uh, joining to the hip. 
sort of standards of living or everything, education, healthcare, education. healthcare, you name it. Even even parents, misplaced parents from their children, stuff like that, who you know used to just pick them up, bring them to McDonald's on the pictures. We now show the parents a different world through football that they can get on, and, and they actually become better parents. They understand more about about where the parents go, and and together. It's a great thing, they work in the classroom and the bell goes and they go out and kick football in, in the yard, like, like the old days, you know, um, when we used to do that. So, so there's some great things, there's, there's hundreds of courses, hundreds of things we do, but that's in danger now, austerity cuts, uh, you know, with, with the government, yeah. uh, there's, there's some, there's some, it's tough times out there. And already David has, has positioned the, the foundation in a much stronger position, which is a massive thing to us. Uh, I, I spent four years trying to get meetings around the world you know, to try and get us to be an international club. Maybe we weren't quite ready for it because we were, you know, struggling with relegation. Dave's been at the club six weeks, I have three trips. Making it up. He, he's, he's phenomenal. And he gets what it is. He doesn't pretend he knows football, but he's, you know, he'll get it very, very quickly. And, and he, he's, it's, it's a wonderful coup for this yeah. club. Um, it's, it's fascinating to both. Yeah. had so many questions, and I'm sure, I hope everybody sitting at home that has tweeted an email, both me and Cammy, were satisfied with the answer. We do appreciate you talking about it. Let so me think of the manager had all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be a chairman. 